I'm waiting for you. I'm just letting that be thought about a little. I don't know where we made this turn, but somewhere along the line, we made the gospel all about us getting something from God instead of us becoming transformed by God. We made this all about us being blessed instead of us being changed. So you can pray a prayer to go to heaven. You can see your need for Savior and actually get real with the fact that you've sinned and be sincere and ask forgiveness and stay angry, frustrated, personal, jealous, prideful, competitive, and just like you were before. Because you weren't maybe taught growing up when you said that prayer that we push. You might not have been taught you're dying so you can live. You're giving back everything you were so everything he is can come alive. And you might just think the attitudes, the motives, and the emotions you knew growing up are the way God made us. No, it's the way we became when Adam ate the tree and man got separated from God. That's why you relate to loneliness. That's why you relate to frustration. That's why you relate to discouragement. That's why we relate to anger. Why? Because it became all about you. Not all about him. So if any man, any man, we're all invited. If any man come after me, let him first deny himself. Not pray a prayer to assure he goes to heaven if he dies on the way home. We preach such a self-serving gospel. And the whole gospel is all about giving up yourself. Because we preach a self-serving gospel, we have discouraged Christians. We got frustrated Christians. We got Christians that go to church that don't want to go to church because they're mad at three other churches. <laughs> and it proves we don't understand the gospel. And we don't know him like we sing. Because your love reveals your knowledge of him. Because it says if you know him, you'll love. If you don't love, you don't know him. It doesn't say you don't see your need for Savior. It doesn't say you don't believe Jesus died on the cross. It just says if you don't love, 1 John 4, 8, it's there. You can check it. If you don't love, you don't know him. See, the goal isn't going to heaven. This is eternal life that you might know him because if I know him who he is becomes my reality and my expression and now I'm restored back to his image the way he made man for God so made for God uh, so loved the world he gave his son right so what he loves is what he created what he loves is what he made us to be God said let us make man in our image so God created man in his image in his own likeness he created him both male and female ladies in his image what's your creative value girls his image you're not less than a man you have the same creative value the same destiny to be like him you're not lacking anything. You're amazing. Yeah? You're not subservient to us. The word submit to your husband doesn't mean be a slave to him. It means yield and adapt yourself to him as you would to the Lord. It means make peace and don't get disgruntled and frustrated and nitpicky and bossy. Because that reveals self-will, self-centeredness. And then when you say, I love you, all you're really doing is saying, I need you. Don't do me wrong. See, because love takes no account of the wrong done to it. So why are we so busted up by each other? Probably because we don't understand love. Probably when I say, I love you, it's really, I need you. I love you. Do you love me? That's not the gospel, church. That's the fall of man. It's caused a lot of pain in the body of Christ, and it's hindered our expression of him. 
So the world's not impressed with who he is because they can't see him in us. Because we look like them, we just have a different belief in him. <laughs> not being mean, guys. I'm smiling the whole time. <laughs> Come on. You can't get mad at me. I'm too nice to you today. But can't we just have a family talk? Can't we just be in the living room? You don't have to fit this description. I'm not saying it's you. I'm saying don't ever let it be you. Guard your heart. Because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Do you know how easy it is to get a hard heart? Do you know how easy it is to think in rightness and be so right that your heart's hard? So right that you're angry. Just get caught up with politics for 20 minutes, disagree with somebody, and now you're bitter because of a presidential race. And all of a sudden, your life is up for grabs. You're not established in anything, man. You're blowing like the wind, and you're a product of the moment. But you believe in him, and you're there on Sunday. Come on, you can handle this. This isn't hard. This is life-giving. You young people, you may not relate to this because I'm 54, but I tell you what, when I was 18, I wish I saw what I see now. I would have a different heritage legacy. I'd have a way bigger thing following me called legacy. I wouldn't have spent time on nothing. I wouldn't have spent time being right and frustrated and mad at my wife and hurting her for 13 years because she wasn't what I thought she'd be, never considering what I was, never even considering what I was lacking, what I wasn't. It's just so easy to look to somebody else and blame your life on something. There isn't a factor in my life that can stop what you see burning in my heart. My own wife can't break my heart. I didn't wake up for her to love me. I woke up to love. I didn't wake up to need her. I woke up to be like Jesus in her life. And I don't care how tried her day is. It'll bring the best out in me. Yay. <laughs> so we're just going to have an okay day. and ain't nothing nobody can do about it. You say, brother, I don't believe you can live that way. I understand unbelief's a problem in the body of Christ. It's a problem because when the rubber meets the road and this thing boils down to the end, you're going to have two groups of folks, people that believe the gospel and people that didn't. That's all you're going to have. So you can yell butt yourself all the way to the end and you can make excuses to remain the same and you can point fingers any way you want. But what did you do with the Jesus you heard? And why are you letting something else matter more? When he is the Lord. The Lord means to govern over. Supreme factor, ruler. And you're going to say, well, brother, you don't know what I'm going through. I'd be in a different place if it wasn't for this, this, and this. Man, I got good news for you. This, this, and this isn't the Lord. Why is it dictating your life? It's not the potter. So somewhere along the line, you got the misunderstood idea that the gospel is all about serving you instead of transforming you. <laughs> this isn't too harsh, is it? You're so quiet. Is it just because you're hearing and going, man, I thought I was just coming to a service. You are. To get stirred up in love and good works. To live effective so people see the light in you and glorify him. Let your light so shine before men, church. That's not some evangelistic duty. That's the joy of walking in love. Love is evangelistic. You're not even trying to impress anybody. You're absolutely impressed with the truth. And you understand why you're on the planet. Oh my goodness. And the questions are all answered through him. Because he's the way, not a good idea.